Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. First and foremost, quick note, I know it's been a minute since I dropped a video. I am working on a list of my top 50 PC games, and writing the script for that video has taken longer than I anticipated. Hopefully, it'll be out by the end of this week, and then we'll be back to a more regular schedule. All right, now let's get to the main point of this vid. A massive patch has just been released for Rogue Trader that overhauls multiple aspects of the game. I review the parts of it I think many of you will find very important important, but everything won't be listed here, so there's a link in the description to the full patch notes. I definitely recommend that you check them out. I am sure many of you will be happy to hear that a lot of voice acting has been added into the game. The prologue is now fully voice acted, which means even characters like Mort and Theodore, who previously you never heard, now have a voice. Needless to say, this makes that section of the game significantly more enjoyable. More companion voice acting has been included throughout the game, but the patch notes don't specify where, so I cannot confirm how extensive the additions are, but more voice acting is always appreciated. Bring It Down, which allows officers to give allies extra turns, can now only be used once on an ally per round, so you can no longer use multiple officers to give one damage dealer several turns during the same round. This is a pretty massive debuff, not only to officers, but also to team composition in general, since you'll almost certainly need more than one damage dealer, whereas before, a well-constructed group could do well with just one by mid-game. Even more devastating, officers no longer generate momentum multiple times a turn by giving bonus turns to their allies. Previously, your party would gain momentum on every turn, no matter how it was given, and this made officers absolutely devastating. Now that's no longer the case, and again, the archetype has taken a pretty significant hit with this patch. Keep in mind, officers are still very powerful and useful, just not as much as they were before. Unfortunately, the nerfs don't stop there. Perilous Ways, which allowed Cassia to damage enemies by moving them, has been nerfed and now only deals damage equal to one plus half her willpower bonus. This damage is increased by one for every cell of movement the target makes, but essentially it won't clear out rooms the way it used to. She still has Litless Stare and other amazing options, so Cassia remains a beast. Many of the items and abilities that provide flat bonuses to damage for every shot from burst fire now provide a percentage bonus to damage instead. This obviously makes Argenta Bolter builds less powerful, but don't worry, she's still amazing. To make things easier, enemy stats have been rebalanced across the game. Perception and agility have been lowered to make dodge a more viable defensive mechanic, while toughness has been slightly increased. Increases to dodge reduction, armor penetration, and parry reduction based on difficulty have been lowered as well. Intelligence now increases the damage of area of effect attacks using ranged weapons by 5% for every point of intelligence bonus. This makes Pascal Bounty Hunter builds even more insane. In addition, Soldier now has a talent called Battlefield Demolition that provides the same boost except is linked to your demolition skill. Argenta Flamer builds will really benefit from that. Speaking of Pascal, his Mechanicus talents are now also available as common talents, making it much easier to select his best options. Seriously, this patch makes him an even bigger monster. All Astartes weapons have a 15-30% damage increase and their stats or effects have been improved as well. All Space Marines, including Ulfar, have a plus 10 bonus to Fellowship, Willpower, and Intelligence, along with a plus 15 bonus to Perception. They also have more maximum wounds and automatically act as cover for allies. Ulfar now starts with additional equipment. Pyromancer abilities should now properly interact with normal fire and fire damage over time effects. Some pyro talents provide buffs based on you being on fire or enemies around you being in flame, so this should definitely make pyromancer builds more powerful. Speaking of which, the soldier talent rapid fire can now be used in tandem with an inferno staff, which fires multiple fireballs. I cannot wait to use this combination in our pyromancer answer live stream. Strength bonus now adds 5% damage per bonus to one-handed weapons instead of just one damage, and this is doubled for two-handed weapons. This will greatly benefit all melee characters, even if they have low strength like Heinrichs. Investing in strength makes a lot more sense now 
although I still think it's best as a third option. The Aftershock Talent, which deals additional damage to targets at the end of their turn when you damage them with mental powers, was previously not dealing any damage, and this has been fixed. Definitely didn't realize this wasn't doing anything, so glad it's been corrected. Now let's move to changes focused on party members. Some companions will have their portrait updated after important story events. This makes a ton of sense, and I am really looking forward to some of the different art. I loaded up an in-game save, but didn't see any different portraits, so not sure what triggers a change. Abelard now automatically starts with heavy armor along with heavy armor proficiency. This is another change that makes a ton of sense and makes him a more viable character. On top of that, Vanguard mechanics have been improved in a couple of different ways, so all around, Abelard is more beastly now. Marazai and Irelet now have access to many of the items that were restricted to humans. This is really nice since there aren't nearly enough Xenos only artifacts to make up for the really cool options they couldn't use. Speaking of Marazai, his romance counters should work properly now. Previously, his counters were reversed, causing his attitude to be very negative towards you even when pursuing a romance. When choosing the heretical choice for the Filestone planet, which removes it as an option for colonization, the player will now receive a major reward. This is a great addition, as before, it was a huge loss with nothing provided for balance. In the reputation menu, you can see a log of all the major decisions you've made which impacted your profit factor. A new epilogue slide has been added for Marazai, and multiple inconsistent or missing slides have been fixed. Many romance dialogues and personal encounters will now only use your stats for checks. Previously, you could be in a conversation with someone and use their persuasion rank to persuade them, which was honestly pretty funny, but also made zero sense. A failed skill check that deals damage now automatically results in an injury. It was weird to not see this in the game, so I'm actually glad they added it. On top of all that, there are a wealth of fixes focused on optimization, crashes, soft locks, lag, and freezing. All the way around, the game should be significantly more stable. That wraps up my thoughts regarding the latest Rogue Trader patch. I really hope it has provided more stability for many of you and that you are enjoying the changes. Let me know your thoughts on the patch in the description below. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care.